Hey, my name is Matt Caracas, and this is where I recorded my new record, You Look Like a Stranger. We're going to take a look at a song called So Will We. I've had this guitar line for a while, maybe about six months. Um, before I actually wrote and record it. But I had the guitar line and the verse melody, and I had the lyric, uh, so pack your bag, your knives, and come for me. I've had that for a long time. And um, I just sat on it and sat on it. Every once in a while, I'd grab the guitar and try to write it, and I never could. And um, I found, at least for me, it's best to not force things. It's best to just let it come naturally. And if it never does, then it never does. So I know everybody's different and that could be wrong for you, but you know, that's how it goes for me at least. Right. So you look like a stranger as a whole, um, is a bit of a mix of electronic and, um, you know, live instruments and whatnot. I thought that having a song that was a bit of a return to form and a bit more raw would be a cool addition to the record and, um, give it a cool dynamic and, uh, mix it up a little bit. And then that's, um, essentially what this became. I took the less is more approach and I really just tried to let the song itself shine and I didn't want to hide behind any tricks or anything fancy. Um, I just, I thought it was a good song and it stands pretty strong on its own. So um, yeah, let's pop it open. So if you see my Pro Tools session here, everything is color coded. Everything is very neat. I always make sure um, I cross fade and I consolidate everything to the same length. I uh, cannot stand messy looking sessions and uh, sometimes when I mix things for people I get sent just total train wrecks and I, um, I spend a lot of time making it look nice before I even start just because um, I'm super anal about that, you know? I didn't end up mixing and mastering this. I ended up sending it to my friend Austin Coop. That is my friend Haley Taylor's boyfriend. And um, as I was writing this record, I was actually working out in my shed and Haley texted me and was like, hey, Matt, like, check out this uh, this new song. And she sent it to me and the recording, the mix and everything, it was very, very good. And I was like, who the hell did this? And she was like, Austin. And I was like, oh, wow. Send me some more stuff. And um, he does primarily metal. So I never, you know, it never crossed my mind um, to, to work with him. And, uh, so she sent me some stuff that was a bit more light and it sounded very, very good. So I ended up hitting up Ivanj, which is citizens manager, my manager. And I said, Hey, I want to get a test mix with this guy. And we sent him the files to a song called, um, and souls don't die was the first song that was mixed. And he sent me his version of it back. And I was blown away. I have his final mix pulled up right here. And I have, the session is actually my rough mix that I sent to him. So we will uh, compare and contrast that. So if you listen to this, this is my rough mix. Got a lot to say. So pack your bag, your knives, and come to me. Yeah, you want to. Sounds pretty decent, right? And then we listen to his uh, final. Got a lot to say. So pack your bag, your knives, and come Immediately, you notice a clarity that mine doesn't have, and also a wideness that mine doesn't have, and also low end that mine doesn't have. Mine is very narrow compared to his, and his is clear and beefier, and it just sounds uh, so much better, in my opinion. The song itself is, is supposed to be a bit, uh, you know, campfire. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it, uh, but you know, like living room jam vibe. Um, so there's only so much you can do with that. And I thought he, um, he took my vision, uh, my sonic example, however you want to call it, my rough mix, and um, really brought it to life in a cool way and it, just enough. And the goal, because most of the record sounds pretty big, um, the goal was to have it dialed back, but not dialed back so much that it sounds like it doesn't belong. And I thought he uh, did a really, really good job. 
So the vibe of the drums I was going for, like I said before, was a bit just kind of jammy. I kind of wanted it to sound like somebody uh, set up a mic and just uh, just kind of rocked out and, it, you know, not that big of a deal. They're just playing, you know. So um, here's um, what the drums sound like soloed out. Sounds pretty cool. And um, my plug-in chain, you'll notice throughout this video, I just use the same things all the time. Um, I'm, I'm not that creative. I know what I like. And uh, yeah, so without any plugins on it, this is how it sounds. It's pretty quiet, but I usually start by chopping out um, a lot of the grossness. And then my go-to compressor is the LA-2A Legacy. I love the medium compression preset. And then I just adjust to taste from there. Um, I, li I use it on nearly everything. Um, so here's what it sounds like without and with. Very nice. And then last but not least, Sketch Cassette. My friend Steve showed me this plugin, and I think it's amazing um it just adds a, a beef that you otherwise wouldn't i like to go to type two and then just adjust the age i turn the hiss all the way down and then do the saturation to taste and i think it sounds awesome i put it you're once again just like the the la2a legacy uh you're gonna see that on nearly everything uh, for my rough mix and you know being that it's a rough mix i didn't try to put too much time into mixing it because i knew that austin was gonna just take it and kill it anyway so um here's without sketch cassette and with beefy so bass i don't have a bass amp here um i live in virginia right now and um all my gear is in toledo um so it's di and um uh, my go-to is this uh, svt classic uad and then I got Sketch Cassette, and then the 1176 Andy John's Bass Preset. I'm a preset guy. I just click presets, you know, until I think shit sounds good. So there's no... If I see a, a preset that says bass and I'm recording bass, I'm clicking it. So there's uh, no method at all. <laughs> so here's what it sounds like um, without anything, and then we'll slowly put everything on. DI signal. It's pretty quiet. There's the amp, sketch cassette, 1176. Nice, smooth, and textured. Boom, we're done with the bass. I try not to overthink anything. I just go, if it sounds good, I move on. So I'm a big fan of really thin sounding guitars, and um, especially my acoustic, I high pass it like crazy usually. This song was supposed to be in, um, only on acoustic, but then I thought it would be kind of cool to just mic an electric guitar and use the mic rather than um, doing an acoustic, right? So it, it kind of it, it had a cool sound to it, I thought. So here's the mix of one of the guitars. Pretty cool. If I solo out just the mic, even thinner. Add the DI, here's some body to it. There's just the DI. Nice. And that DI track doesn't have an amp modeler or anything on it. It's just the DI with sketch cassette, of course. And the mic has, what do you know, the medium preset. So, and then I, you know, high pass like, like I always do. So, um, it sounds pretty cool. I wanted to keep the essence of the song a bit jammy. Uh, like I said before, so I didn't do a lot of guitar layers. I didn't do leads, um, but I did on the courses beef it up a little bit with a rhythm uh, distorted track. So, which are out of tune. I didn't notice that until now, but hey, uh, I guess it's not supposed to be perfect, right? So here's what it sounds like when the chorus hits with all the guitars. And then here's without the textured electrics. So if you notice, it just gives it a nice boost. Subtle. This song is all about being subtle. 
Something that I did on the new record that I normally don't do is I collabed with a lot of people. And I knew for this song, I wanted to have a, a rockin' guitar solo. And uh, so I hit up my friend Justice Tripp, who sings in a band called Angel Dust, who is a very talented musician. And um, I sent him the the part and I said, hey, like, would you be down to rip a solo over this? And he said, of course I would. And I'm not kidding. I don't know maybe in an hour or it was, it was so fast. He immediately hit me back with this solo and he was like, Oh yeah, you, you might have to edit it a little bit, but you know, here it is like, and I listened to it and I was blown away. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it at all. I didn't edit it a little bit. So Justice, if you're seeing this, you killed it, right? Um, here's his solo. Soloed out. Something that I noticed Justice does is he creates earworms with things other than just vocals, right? He can utilize um, a guitar solo and have a hook within that solo. And I think he does this without realizing it, which uh, just shows um, how talented he is at uh, music. So if you listen here, there's a, there's a hook hidden within this guitar solo. It's right here. just a nice way to cap it off it's memorable it's simple and it uh gets stuck in your head so yeah so he did a great job on that i utilized an acoustic in the courses just to give um something driving up the middle some body up the middle um the guitars are very very thin and they're all panned. Not hard, but um, there was nothing right up the center. Here's what it sounds like. And once again, I like thin sounding acoustics. I mean, if you look at, if you look at this chain here, I chop up to 346, got the medium preset, um, sketch cassette, what do you know? And then I chop even more. So here's what it sounds like without any of the plugins on. Here's with it chopped. Compression. Tape. Chopped more. And that's the sound I landed on. I think it's cool. I think there's a, a charm to um, iPhone voice memos in a way. And uh, they sound really crappy in a cool way. And I think, uh, you know, I kind of go for that sometimes. Um, and I, I just think it sounds pretty neat and cool. So something that didn't end up making it on the final mix uh, was a vocal synth that I did. And it's something that I do quite often, um, especially on uh, Life in Your Glass World by Citizen. And um, I did it a lot on um, You Look Like a Stranger, particularly in the song Pick and Choose. In the verses, um, in between the vocal melodies, there's pauses, and I have a kind of like a robotic mechanical noise, and that's actually just my voice um, affected. I tend to utilize that trick a lot because um, I notice when I do that and I just hum a, a weird melody or maybe not even weird, but just a melody and um, I just mess around with effects. I Some cool stuff happens, you know, and I tried to implement that into this song. And um, while it sounds cool, it just didn't fit the vibe of the song. And it also sounded a bit too messy against the vocals, which at the end of the day, when you're writing a song, um, you know, there's millions of things that sound cool and could sound cool in the song, but does it serve the song and, you know, does it make the song better? And while I thought what I'm about to show you sounded cool, uh, it just didn't serve the song. So um, here's what it sounds like. Kind of sounds like a, a kazoo or something. I don't know. But here's what it sounds like without the effects. Mm -hmm. 
It's just me. Just me blowing. And then I put a pitch on there so you can hear the low. Hear that? Then I put the decapitator, which is a great plugin. And then I capped it off with raw. Kind of fun, but you know, at the end of the day, not everything has to be in there. As far as auxiliary percussion and whatnot, I just have your standard um, shakers. I have your tambourine. Um, I like to pitch down my shakers. Um, I'll show you here. Here is what they sound like without it. And then pitch down. I think it makes them sit in a little nicer and uh, I think it makes them sound smoother. Just personal preference. Um, during Justice's guitar solo, I actually have some claps that I quadrupled because I was the only one here. Which is cool. It's just some ear candy. It doesn't really repeat. It's, it only happens in the guitar solo. And um, I think that kind of stuff is cool in songs where um, you pick up on it after you hear it a few times and maybe not the first time. And here's what it sounds like. Happens again. Pretty cool. And last we got vocals. And, um, you know, to keep up with the, the current trend of bare, um, the vocals are pretty bare. There's no harmonies. A long time ago, while uh, recording with Will Yip, he said something to me that has stuck with me uh, to this day. Um, he was talking about how people hide behind um, harmonies a lot. And uh, he referenced the killers. He said, uh, listen to Hot Fuss. Um, the melodies are so good, there's hardly any harmonies. You know, he doesn't have to hide behind anything. And um, I think about that a lot when I'm writing songs, honestly. And um, I thought specifically for this song, not that this song, that the melodies are so unbelievably strong that they don't, that they don't need to hide behind anything. Um, but I just thought, um, since everything else is so raw, that I really shouldn't um, do any harmonies or, you know, whatever. So I just tastefully use some layers. And if you look here... I have a uh, main vocal and main vocal double, and then I have a low octave, and then I have one little high octave um, just for one part before a pre-chorus, but I have the vocal. It's only a single vocal at first, and then I kick in the double on a specific part um, on a staccato like, ah! So um, here's without the double. Got a lot to say. So pack your bag, your knives, and come for me. Yeah, no, you want to... And then here's with the double. Got a lot to say. So pack your bag, your knives, and come for me. Yeah, no, you want to, but it don't. And it's little things like that where it's not like you're adding a ton of different things to try to make a song uh, sonically interesting, but maybe just taking away a layer of the same thing here and there will create a, a big difference sonically, right? So I've maybe to a fault um beefed reverb a lot um i hate using reverb on my voice and i've fought people pretty hard to take reverb off my voice and um i actually w was very lenient and more accepting and um towards that with this record and um austin's suggestions and especially vocal um loudness he kept wanting me to turn my vocals up, vocals up, and I was like, no, down, down, down. And I eventually ca caved into, um, you know, what he suggested. He said something to me. He said, well, as a, as a fan, um, I sometimes think that I would like to hear your voice more when I'm listening. And um, I decided to stop being so stubborn and to, to listen to him. And um, I'm very happy I did because I think the record sounds really good. So, but... With that being said, this song, there's no reverb on the vocals. I think he put a little bit of slap back on, um, but in my rough mix, which is what we're listening to right now, there's no reverb. Out. 
I tried a lot of new things on this record and it felt pretty good to scale it back and do something that I'm more used to and I think it fits nicely and creates a cool dynamic and um, I really like the song and I like how it's just a good driving um, upbeat track and um, yeah I hope you like it too and thank you for watching I hope this was cool and uh, yeah take care Hey, my name is Matt Caracas, and this is where I recorded my new record. Okay, let me restart that. Hey, my name is... Alright. Okay, restart. Okay. <laughs> okay, restart. We're going to take a look at the song called... Okay, restart. Um, restart. And... Okay, restart. Um. Okay, wait. Let me let me re-say that. Let me re-say that. Oh, this the restart. There are all, um. Uh, let me restart that because I fucking burped. So since I didn't. Okay, I had a friend. Um. Okay. That um. Okay. Initially wanted to do this song. Be all um. Okay. Restart. I'm a big fan of. Okay. Restart. Okay. Let me restart that. Let me restart that. Okay. Okay. I'm recording, right? Okay. There we go. Restart.